Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 278. I am your host, Norma Sanzo. Joining me today is Twy. G'day. Hey there, Twy. How are you doing? Uh, a little sick, a little bit of the uh, the post-con cold, but mm. otherwise I'm doing pretty good. Uh, that's good to hear and sorry for the cold. That sucks all around. It's all good. I blame my family. That was sick when I got home and they gave it to me. So technically it's not the con cruds then. <laughs> no, at least I don't think so. <laughs> no problem then. And also joining us today is Starstream. Hello, everypony. How are you all doing? I'm fine. And how about you? Uh, suffering from con crud. <laughs> oh, no. What? How? Uh, apparently, uh, let's just say that I was staying at one of a uh, fr- friend's place and he kind of passed the coke to me or something. Or I think it was when I got back and I suddenly suffered from the cold. Oh, no. This kind of reminds me of uh, Pax Pox. Oh, God, no. Uh, well, it seems that I'm the only one who is kind of okay, but my sleeping schedule's all messed up. Like, I've been waking up stupidly early. I, I think it's because of all the Thailand time where I have to wake up early just because I needed to catch panels and conventions and whatnot. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. I, I do like the trend of waking up early because I get more time added to the clock. But anywho, in today's episode, we'll be talking about news and also we'll be talking about our, well, convention breakdowns, what we thought about it and stuff. Like, we were there and probably we might invite a special guest in to talk about his experience in the other end of the spectrum. As far as I know, I was there as a panelist and also a guest. Twy here was a guest and we also had two people who were working in the background. So, without further delay, let's head into the news. And in first news, well, we have a guy who here likes um, Build-A-Bear plush and also a guy from Australia. And what do you have? Australia Build-A-Bear giving out free movie posters for the My Little Pony movie. Yay! So, if you guys don't know, um, in a recent post via the Facebooks, um, the official Australian Build-A-Bear page just recently announced that they'll be giving away a free poster, um, movie poster that is, with every purchase of a Bill Bear plush. It doesn't specifically say it has to be My Little Pony, but it's just purchase a plush, you'll get a free poster, and if I'm reading this right, buy one, get one free movie pass. Actually, it says, uh, say, uh, it says that it's giving a free poster, and buy one, get one free pony movie pass with the purchase of pony plush if anyone oh Not any plush. okay okay yeah my, my bad then my bad but still um you buy pony you get pony so that makes sense so anybody excited for this um let's go with twy uh well it's definitely interesting i don't go to build a bear myself but a few of my friends do so i might send them send them off to do a bit of uh scouting around and see what's going down uh, suss out exactly if you actually have to buy a pony plush to get the movie passes or if they're a thing you can purchase separately because if they are I can tell you we're going to swarm those stores <laughs> in mass <laughs> alright but I do want to know about the um, get uh, sorry buy one free movie sorry buy oh wow the wording here is really derp Buy one, get one free movie pass. With, yeah, I, I I don't really get that. To me, when I read this, it sounds like you buy a pony plush, you get a poster, and you get a free movie ticket? That sounds weird. Yeah. I, I don't Pretty think... Pretty much is that. Yeah, but I, I don't think it's that way. If that's the case, that means that Hasbro of Australia allocated a few hundred tickets for Bill of Bear to give away with every purchase... There's some incentive, I can see that happening, but I'm not 100% sure. That seems interesting, but I, I don't know. Um, Twy, uh, if you do send out your scouts, uh, do ask them to try and ask if you buy plush to get movie tickets or something like that. I mean, uh, what, Bill Bear is, what, about $20, something like that? I have no idea how much build bear is. Uh, I've got some friends that would know, so I'll definitely ask them and then report back to the MBS show. Okay. Well, I, I know the price. Oh, how much is it? 
40 AUD. 40. Technically, you know what? Give or take a few bucks here and there, you are getting a plush and a movie poster for free. So technically, it's a bit cheaper than buying a ticket at the counter, which is about what? 10 to 15, maybe 20, 20, not including concessions. Yeah, so basically, it's about the same price. Yeah, about that. Yeah, one gets you food, one gets you a plush. <laughs> if that works that way. But still, uh, the movie poster is the good one. Like, the one that we all like. So, yay. That's exciting. I just want to hey, give you a heads up also, is that this promotion only applies to store purchase only. You uh, can't get it online. Yes. Well, that's one way to counter it. And, yeah, um, it seems that the offer starts this 31st August till September 3rd. So, yeah, uh, if you guys are very, very interested in living down under, I suggest that you head off. Let me check this thing. Uh, yeah, you still have a week away. So, well, technically, no, but you you know the rules. Just stand by on the 31st. Go to Bill a Bear and go buy, buy, buy. Because those posters are going to be really looking good. I'm jelly of you guys. You get those things. Uh, if you guys are lucky at the same time, the fact that, Songbird Serenade and Temper Shadow may release at the same time, but we may not be sure whether or not Australia may get it the same time as the US release, and I do not know whether or not they're going to push it back a bit. Well, you know, because of the timing, I have to say they should do it because it's a good time to kind of get movie ticket sales early. It's a good plan. It's a good strategy. But anywho, moving on to getting things early, um, if you do read the My Little Pony movie prequel comics from IDW. Um, this coming August 29, they'll be releasing the My Little Pony movie prequel comic series, the trade back, um, the hard paperback thingy of all the issues in one go. So yeah, that will be coming out on the 29th of August. So, wow, um, that's fast. I just kind of bought the third issue about... Oh, this week and on the 29th everybody's gonna get the whole thing that's not fair i would have more to say but as, as someone who doesn't read the comic I, I really don't have anything to put towards this so this collection is uh book one to book four is it yes the whole collection because um i'm i'm doing the research now yeah uh the first book came out on june 28th second is july 26th Third is August 23rd, and the fourth and last one should be September of what date is unclear, but it should be in September. But from what I'm reading here, um, Amazon.com is reporting that the trade paperback collection of the My Little Pony movie prequel comic series will be released on August 29th. So, yeah, that is way too soon. And if you guys don't want to buy a physical copy of the book, you can also get it via digitally. But that one will be released on September 27. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I, I, I don't know what to say. Well, considering it's volumes on the four, I'm probably going to look at getting this mm. rather than trying to get each volume in individually. It'll just be a lot easier. Oh, And also a lot cheaper. Yep, can I, can I, mm, I'm not 100% sure. I bought my book for about $3, something like that. So technically, uh, the trade would be cheaper than 3 times 4, 3, 6, 12 probably, I don't know. I, I don't know. My math and me are not friends. But still, um, if you guys do get the chance, I do suggest that you go read the comics before watching the movies because it is a really good addition to have or it's really good supplementary to read before going to the movie but anyway uh let's see uh, twice you said you want to buy the book then yeah i'll probably be definitely looking at buying this book because i, I want to to read the prequel stuff because i'm one of those freaks that has to no, everything. If people put out the backstory to a, to something, I have to read it or watch it or whatever. Ah, because right. I have to know everything. 
Even if it means I have to spend a four, uh, good four hours or so on Wikipedia just getting the last <laughs> little bits of lore, oh, wow. I will do it. Oh, good thing that you're not reading the X-Men then. Oh, no, I've read X-Men before. Oh, God. You poor, poor soul. Hey, I lost an entire day to Wikipedia just for looking up stuff related to the themes of the anime Neon Genesis Evangelion. <laughs> oh, God. It's a whole day of, of Wikipedia. And I'm pretty sure I barely scratched the surface. Oh, God. I, I don't even want to touch that one. Uh, but what about you, a Star? Interested in getting this? I'm just double-checking with the series because I've been checking on Book Depository and apparently there's also the same listing, but you can actually get it now, something like that. Ooh, okay. So I just want to double-check that if this is the same pub paperback or not because the My Little Pony, the movie prequel on the... On book depository, it's paperback and with ninety six pages, and the Amazon listing is also do- posting the same thing with the ninety six pages. So I do want to double check. And for those who didn't know, book depository is a website where you can actually buy books, but they give a worldwide, so it's actually worth it. Ah, huh, all right, cool. There's something to look into if you're interested. Uh, for me, I'll just buy digital comics because. No space to shelf those comics. And um, digital is kind of neat and tidy all in one place. That's just me. Yeah. But still, um, so I'm guessing you're interested in this, right? Huh? Star? Yeah, I'm, I'm somewhat interested in it. But then again, I may not have the location to shelf it though. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, do what I do. Digital. Digital's are fun. Yeah, but in the case of if you... Dis- if you lose the account or something, you may lose the whole How collection. could you lose an account? I, I think um, Comixology lets you link to your, what you call this, um, Comixology page or even Amazon. No, they are related to, yeah, Amazon. And also, I think they have Facebook logins. So yeah, you, you could do that if you want to log in. Okay, that's good to know. But one of those things where it's easy for you to... Um, log in or easy for you to join like they they, oh, they, they want you to, yeah, let's just say this they want your money that's all I can say uh, and talking about monies um, Netflix apparently they're soliciting their entitled Equestria Girls Tales of Catalot High the description there is very vague um, it seems that in a nutshell in an alternate universe Equestria the ponies have become teenage girls who must learn what it means to be human while attending Cantalot High School. That description there does not sound anything like what we've seen. This is so not what we caught. But with that, what is this? Um, is this a new series? Is this something um, new? Or could this just be one of those shorts that we've been getting during the whole summer? I have no idea, especially since I don't have Netflix. I, I have no idea what this is going to be, but I want to watch it. Same here. But same here. I think the the shorts we've been getting recently are specifically referred to as the Equestria Girls Summertime Shorts. So I'm pretty sure this is something completely different to that. Hmm. All right. That's one way to look at it. I I would have thought those those things that we were getting they're going to rename it into well. Tales of Canterlot High, probably, I, I don't know. But yeah, you do make a good point there, Twy. Um, the shorts that we'll be getting were called Summertime Shorts, was it? Yeah, they're called the Summertime Shorts. Uh, all right, then. So yeah, there's that, so probably not. But still, I do like the angle. I do want to see where this goes. And I do, uh, like I mentioned before, I do enjoy the Equestria Girls line. So we'll see where it goes. And Star, what are you? Interested in this? Maybe. It does look interesting, though. This, this says that um, the ponies have become teenage girls to learn uh, what it means to be human while attending Cantaloupe High. Does that mean that it's the equestrian ponies that go into the world? It's a whole group just to live the life as the six characters or something like that? Then again, it may be interesting. So, because you may see two versions of Fluttershy or two of each pony characters. 
Yeah, I mean, that's interesting and not, not like, I, I don't know. I mean, it does sound that way. I'm not a big fan of that. I mean, you should totally split the characters because each character has their own personality because um, Pony version of Rainbow Dash is a well-established grown adult. Teen version of Rainbow Dash or human version of Rainbow Dash is still in high school and just wanting to know um, what does it mean to have superpowers. So, yeah, I mean, two totally different worlds and two totally different point of view and combining all of them into one world is not fun. Like, yeah, nah. I I rather see each story tackled in a very specific manner. But that's just me. But with that, that's the last piece of news we have on the show. So, let's hop on to... Well, I, I won't say what we've been doing this week because, well, that's obvious. Um, we've been at a con, we've been <laughs> hanging out, we've been experiencing the convention life. Yeehaw. Yeah, con- convention time is good time. Yeah, I think, yeah, we can go for that for a bit. So, yeah, this weekend, convention um, went to Thailand and experienced the Siponi Con. Um, held in Bangkok, Thailand, at the Thai Summit Tower. It was very interesting. Um, I could tell a whole story about it, but I think I did it on my own personal YouTube channel. Um, go there to find out what I have to say about it. But um, to summarize, I enjoyed the con highly, and I do wish that the con staffers, the con chairs, do try and create another one next year or something like that. I, I By the looks of it, it seems impossible, but who knows? Um, Dan is the man who always tries to do the crazy things, and probably he would. I, I don't know. But what about you guys? Um, Twy, what, what, what was your point of view? Like, um, I mentioned it before, panelists, congoer, and two um, as volunteers. So what was your view on this? I thought ZponyCon was great. It was smaller than I was expecting, but it still had uh, an air of energy and excitement that I felt uh, was lacking from some cons I've been to in my own city, which have been significantly larger with attendees and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So even though it was small, it was a lot of fun. And I enjoyed being there. Like normally, when I'm at a con, I will get bored after like a couple of hours and want to go home. <laughs> I didn't. I I didn't want to leave uh, when I was at SeaPonyCon. And being on the MBF show panel was fantastic. Well, that's not your first panel, right? Like you mentioned to me before, you've been on a few various panels in Australia. Like the, I think you mentioned one at the furry convention, was it? Uh, yeah, last year I was on the MLP panel for the now defunct uh, convention, Furwag. And the replacement convention for that, Fur Out West, which is in October, I believe, I will be on the panel for the MLP panel at that convention too. Ooh. So this is my second panel, and that will be my third. Awesome, awesome. Well, I, I do hope that you take some experience in... Um, the MBS one and apply it there like for one microphone near mouth so people can hear you talk. <laughs> I don't think we had a microphone when I did the panel last year. Oh, wow. Oh, because the room was that small. Ah, okay. But still, um, I-, I do hope that you take some valuable info from this one. So what else, man? Like, um, you mentioned that it had energy, you didn't want to leave. Could it also be the fact that you're in Thailand no, uh, I, I didn't care too much for it being in Thailand. Uh, I think myself and a couple other people uh, that I was with decided that it's probably they would pro- it might have been better if it was in Malaysia or Singapore. Hmm. It might have been and promoted people to come more. It, it wasn't too bad being out of the country again after all these years, but uh, but Thailand itself, I, I indifferent to. Mm, all righty then, all righty then. I did like all. I did like having vendors I could purchase things I wanted from though. When I went to PAX Oz back in 2013, I felt like there wasn't anything any of the vendors had that I wanted. But vendors here at Seaponicon, there's definitely things I wanted. 
it was nice to have options of actually stuff to buy. Well, it's kind of catered to your interest, which is ponies, and I did see that you bought Adagio and Trixie. And also, did you bought Rosluck and, um, was it Lyra? No, not Lyra, but um, Bon Bon, right? No, no, I got a Trixie, Rosluck, and Adagio Equestria Girls figures, and I got the Coco Pomel plushie. Oh, man, like... Oh, those are good, those are good. Like plushies, I'm not a big fan of it, but still, the Equestria Girl Minis, yeah, I'm I, I really want to look for a Rainbow Dash and Fuzzy Shy first generation. Uh, but well, um I'll try and find it on online stores. But that's from your point of view. And so, Star, how was your views, man? Like you're kind of volunteer. How was your experience at the con? Was, I, for my case is that I've been busy like walking around just to check that the convention is pretty much going fine, have to talk with the con organizers to say certain things, be on the communication network all the time to hear if there's any like recall or anything like situations, updates, or this kind of stuff. Not to mention to know where the the VIP is also where where they are, their status has been. Mm-hmm. So besides taking care of the background stuff. Um, did you do anything else? I mean, besides being on the panel? Oh, honestly speaking, I didn't even do much to, uh, other than just seeing a lot, of the, watching a lot of panel. Though I did miss the Night Times concert panel, which I hear was very interesting. I kind of regret missing that because I went out with, uh, went out with Charlie just to well go to the town to get some stuff. Mm, all right. That's pretty interesting because um, I did catch a bit of the... Um, party X was it? I I don't remember what they called their party. Friendship X. Yeah, Friendship X, and also the night party thingy. I I did saw the thunderstorm. Yeah, those two. Like I I did catch a bit of those, but I don't remember the whole thing. So yeah, that's interesting. But did you bought anything or did you buy anything there? Well, I actually wanted to get a commission for com- from this one vendor booth called Kama Moon Shadow, and I couldn't manage to get it in time because I found out that on Sunday they weren't available there so it was a bit sad yeah Karma Moonshadow was good yeah and then um, I only got one um, some small trinkets from the Pony TS shop yeah the lady selling right I I bought yep I I think I bought all the keychains from her and also one sunset uh, keychain Oh, I, I, uh, that's my only weakness. Okay. Yeah, but at least I did get some posters and I did get some signatures from Mich- Michelle Creeper. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. And, well, uh, I'm going to introduce the other guy who's been silent for all this while. Um, he's also part of the, what you call this, um, volunteer crew. And that's, uh, Puritic MG. You can talk now if you want to. I think you have to. Oh, really? Yep. <laughs> uh, so, um, MG, you were at the con, I, and you're local to Thailand, right? Yep, I am. So, how was it? Like, is this your first convention? It's not my first convention. My first convention was uh, in Malaysia, the oh. Friendship Express. Yeah. Ah, all right, cool. So, how was your experience with this one? Like, I'm thinking that this is your first time being fully involved in the background rather than just being dragged in last minute, right? To be honest, uh, I think my experience with this, uh, uh, well, as I am working with uh, lots of people uh, that I used to like talk to online, never met them before, I think it was a great experience all in all. Mm. And if I'm not mistaken too, you're also VIP relations, right? Yes, I am. I am a VIP handler. Yeah, so I, I have to stay with uh, Michelle and Monique a lot during the convention. Which, mm, kind of jelly, because, girl, you, you got to talk to Michelle a lot. Like, grr. <laughs> yeah, mostly we just talk about stuff, not... <laughs> well, I, I'm guessing that uh, certain things can be shared and cannot be shared with your conversations because well why would you share them right so yeah um i'm just guessing that um getting to talk to her was fun right yep it is mostly mostly it's just 
we just talk about like uh, daily life stuff and how how different uh, the culture between Thailand and them living in Canada. Oh. And, yeah. Yeah, how their life uh, going to convention and uh, because this is, uh, if I remember correctly, this is uh, Michelle's the thirty first convention that she been to. Yes, thirty first um, person. No, thirty first appearance at the convention. Yes, yes, that's right. So yeah, I, I did talk to her about that too, and she seems to like Thailand um, in terms of how she interacts with the people and how polite people are. And I think that's a taste of Asian culture in a sense where um, people are polite to you in a sense where you come, we'll be polite. If you screw up, we screw you back up, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Most of the time we are uh, very welcoming to the uh, like tourists, foreigners and all mm -hmm. that. Well, it's because that we want them to have a really good time and whatnot, like um, give that good impression. So yay, there's always that. Yeah. But um, besides that, like, um, what's your experience like? Like, um, besides talking to Kreber and besides being that VIP handler, like, just as a normal congoer. Uh, I've never experienced such like what do you call it international convention before, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, in Thailand we have our own Thai pony con as well, but. It's different because it's local. We speak Thai. We have Thai events. This is more like I I experienced like the Western culture, in, in in a package, for Sifonicon, and I think it's great. I I I love that people enjoy it, and we have lots of people uh, flying from other places as well. Yeah, that, that is true. Um, from what I heard, there's someone who. Uh, flew from Galacon to Bronicon and then to Siponicon. And I'm also guessing he's going to be at another con this weekend. Is there another con this weekend? I don't remember. This weekend is a Bronicon, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, yes. Yeah. So I'm guessing he's going to be there too. Wow. If that's true, he is a con goer, like nuts. Yeah. I think it's Brony Physicist, right? Yes, that's the guy I'm talking about. Well, Brony Ken is having their last run this week. Ah, oh, well, it's understandable. And also, if I did hear right, um, Nightmare Nights Dallas is also having their last con this year too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the great cons are kind of ending. Can't say much. But still, um, besides the whole international feel, um, MG, what else was it? Like, did you get to buy anything? Well, I get to buy some of the like buttons, but sadly we couldn't get more vendors to actually come to the convention, you know. And that, that was a bit um, disappointing too with all the amount of vendors that we had. But still, it can be help. Uh, I, I don't know the reason why. I'm not going to speculate because it's not my job to speculate. And usually if I do speculate, it's not good. So yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. Well, to be honest, I, I would say that there's lots of points that I would like to point out as well, but I don't know. It's more like I'm a bit disappointed that I, I think it would be more grand in the terms of uh, since it's like C PonyCon, you mm -hmm. know, even the name already telling us like this is for Southeast Asian bronies. Mm -hmm. True, true. I mean, that's that too for Southeast Asian. But, you know, we can't be in a small ball of Southeast Asia. We need to expand. And... I don't mind what we had. It was rather nice to me. I do like the, what you call this, experience of having everyone in one little tiny spot. But I, I don't know. Um, before I continue on with what I have to say, um, MG, is there anything more? Well, I do have like, I don't know. What do you think of the attendees so far? Like the numbers and all that? Well, it's no secret that the numbers of attendees are kind of low. But... Uh, I don't know. To me, this is a hard sell or a hard thing to discuss because do we really want to reveal the numbers? I don't think so. Let's keep it that way. Yeah. I think it's better. It's kind of public, but it's rather... Let's just say this. Given the location, given the time, and given the well fan base, it's kind of hard for people to travel. So attendees are... Not at a high premium. But 
we do have a lot of people coming over and that what impressed me you have a lot of people from Malaysia Singapore some people from the states Germany and also Japan so yeah the, the attendees were kind of all over the place if you ask me yeah they all have hearts actually attend <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so uh let's see um as for me i kind of enjoy it but i i think i have to really specify why i really enjoy this convention i think with the small amount of people it kind of felt personal you know what i mean oh that's right yeah yeah like you always see the same faces you always, you always recognize this person that person so you kind of tend to talk with them and you get a general idea of who is who and in the end it was a fun experience i'm not going to say that oh we should have gotten a bigger place gotten more bigger numbers and what not what's done is done what 90 uh dan and also uh, who was his name again uh, i don't want to confuse buckweiser yeah buckweiser buckweiser uh, did a really good job in what they had and yeah it, it was really personal it was a really personal convention yeah i i, I kind of like your point that it's it's more like since we have less people we we get to have more time to hang out with each other yeah yeah that's true that's true so um i'm going to ask everyone this question and i'll start with twy what was your most favorite and memorable moment for the con uh my favorite most memorable moment i would probably have to say would have been uh the mbs show panel really though yeah i've the speed on a panel is great as, as someone who wants to who has a youtube channel and wants to kind of get a bit more popular and has some minor aspirations for being a uh the one that's the guest and not uh the guest of the guest mm-hmm. being on panels is always always a lot of fun even i've only been on two they're a lot of fun and i hope to be on more yeah I, i'm sure you will man i'm sure you will like with the one that's going on next month is it or october coming or is it west yeah for out west yeah for out west like that's going to be cool i do hope that you enjoy yourself there and well promote stuff uh sell sell out <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll try. My my second favorite part was the um the opening ceremony. Oh yeah, the opening ceremony. I was, was completely good. caught off guard when when uh, Daniel came out onto stage singing the Cons theme song. Really no. Like you weren't was, expecting that. Yeah. I I didn't realize he's the one who sang the song to begin with. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, dang." So yeah, I was actually really impressed with that. I was caught off guard. Also, I love that song because it's so cheesy. I can't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're talking about that song, what what got me about that song was Michelle coming in and singing the theme song. What I was like, what? Oh my god! Like this is cool. Yo, uh, is that all, Twy? Uh, well, those are my favorite two moments of the con outside of buying the Coco Pamel mm-hmm. plushie, which I absolutely love. I've got a set up so standing on uh, the base unit of my speakers, <laughs> so she's staring at me over one of my screens. Nice. So, Star, what what about you? Favorite moments of the con and stuff? I uh, just want to say that in my case, I have a, I have a, some favorite. I have a lot of favorite moments actually. Yeah, name them, man. So my favorite moment for my convention, I think I could say, all everything was everything is uh, ha- having a. It's kind of my favorite moment, just being in the convention, just hanging out with friends, doing all the background stuff, and all this kind of, you know, sh- seeing all this kind of shenanigans in and out. But but if wanna really wanna mention it, I think. I think everyone will agree the fact that it's the Sea Pony Orchestra who having their first debut at the Sea Pony Con, and man oh man, I'm still feeling that chill after like remembering their orchestra. I, I heard a lot of good things, and we wanted to be there, but then Thai traffic was kind of a killer. Like we rode a cab just to be there, just try to be there an hour early or so, probably catch the tail end or the mid of it, but. 
Thai traffic killed us. So yeah, we, we, we totally missed it. Well, I just want to say that the first song that they played, the first flight, that was basically the a special song that was written for the C, Project C Ponycon. And then I think after that was the Lullaby for the Princess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was really good. And then I think one of it, I could say the most ki- killer of all was the fact that Pony Band actually bring Shadow Puppets all the way from Russia just to play at the convention. They're using the what you call a light source mm-hmm. projected onto a white screen. And since that the whole place was basically what you call it, they don't use any lights, it's just pure darkness. And they also wearing the what you call it a cloak, a mm. black cloak. So they're just controlling the the puppets at the at the front. Then while they are doing the a cappella for the ballad of the Princess Platinum and that was so good. Although there was a bit of a derp when I hear from one of our the orchestra conductor, Kelvin, who's um who so- told us that there was supposedly one part that well they had kind of they couldn't find the piece of the puzzle and then so it kind of derp a bit. <laughs> well, if nobody points it out then nobody knows. <laughs> Yeah, nobody knows. And though the problem, though I think of all the problems with the convention hall was the fact that, well, the audio system was having a big, you know, headache kind of thing. Oh, well, <sighs> derps happen since the MBS show is there. <laughs> yeah, since the MBS show is there. And also the the organizers who they, pretty much they say them they themselves also have problem with tech. <laughs> well, well. And then they're there, tech is always... Kind of a problem. <laughs> well, yeah, dance involves too, so that's why. <laughs> uh, but uh... well, in, uh, another addition, one more thing, another favorite moment of mine is basically after convention. <laughs> well, whereby people gather in my hotel room and we kind of derp a lot. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've heard of it. I've heard of it. One of the favorite derps I heard was um, Charlie and Ron Ron Bon. They were supposed to woke wake up early. I think around 7 or 9 just to catch the cab to the airport because our flight was at 11 and it's best to check in 2 hours early and they party all night. So yeah, uh, great job guys. <laughs> Let's just say that drinking was a bit of involvement there. I know, I heard. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. But that's besides the point. So MG, what about you? Favorite moments of the con? Oh, my favorite moment uh, from the convention is actually it's going to be PMV Dream Team. Oh, yeah. really? Now, yeah, because I I I really like watching the, the uh, fan content that actually come out from you know, like the My Little Pony. <laughs> like and and they all are funny. Like if you watch stuff from Ashies or uh, Try Dashy, if you know, uh, probably everyone here know of him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, the content that they make is all always great and funny. Oh, and yeah, I I always look forward to the MBS panel as well. <laughs> it was great. It was a trade yeah, wreck see? and a half. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, um, I if I didn't enjoy, I wouldn't be sitting in front <laughs> watching <laughs> you guys talking. <laughs> oh, well, true. Uh, the the problem with the uh, thing was I, I have to blame myself for not talking into the mic like ah I was rather disappointed in that too mm. yeah I mean I can hear it I can hear it quite clearly but I don't know if like because of the they have the monitor on the on the stage right yeah yeah that's yeah. the thing like I think uh, they might have problem it's, it's not that like I, I think um out of the three of us star here was the one who sounded okay and i think he knows how to handle a microphone not like the two of us and i, I don't know i i feel awkward kissing the mic on stage well i he had to speak close to the microphone actually yeah and then yeah. it so happened that when i was tapping on the mic that mic was the good one okay <laughs> you get the good one then yeah. Yeah, yeah. The microphone that actually Young have was the one that uh, Michelle used to sing. So, yeah. Oh, great, great. <laughs> La-di-da. Great on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess what they call it, I call myself the magic hand where by anything I touch with tech, it somehow is doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you, you yeah. hear this twice? He gets the good mic while we get the broken ones. Yeah. <laughs> 
It probably wouldn't have helped me out anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so MG is that all? Yeah. Like anything else? No, yeah. I think meeting up with Michelle is a, a great opportunity as well. Yeah. All right, dude. Then. But most of all, I think the most thing that uh, the most memorable thing that I had in the convention is to be able to meet with you guys and the people from all around the world. Yeah, that, that's a good one too. And well, for me, I have to agree with you on meeting everyone because I, I don't know. I mean, for me, when I went there, like the knowledge of meeting people like you, Star, and also Twy here is kind of exciting. But what got me out of the blue or like kind of left um, out of left field was uh, Osaka Jack. If you guys don't know who is he... He was a podcaster for Everfree Network. He was the host for Into the Spotlight with Osaka Jack. And his show style was interviewing people from the fandom and also people who work on the show. And for me to meet him in person was a shock. Like, I wasn't expecting him to be there. In all hindsight, I it shouldn't be a surprise because he's in Asia, Thailand, and Japan is not that far. But still, I was not expecting that. No one. Yeah. No one expected that. Yeah. I was... think no one expected that everyone came from around the world. I mean, a few came from the US, not to mention one or two came from the Europe region. I was quite shocked when I hear, I was like, wait, Brony Physicist? I was like, wait a minute. Brony Physicist American. Yeah, I was like, Wait a minute! I thought he was the one who did the Brony, f- the what you call it, physics panel about the the what you call it, slideshow about the ponies, and he did say that he wasn't. But I was like, wait! Well, I was like, wow! But but I'm quite surprised is that a few people came from U U S all over the world oh. just to visit us. Yeah, a, that, a small convention. Yeah, that, that's the thing too. I I was really surprised. And um, another thing, well, if you wanna say what's my favorite moment or favorite time at this convention there's a few um, I'm going to go chronologically uh, it was when Dan asked people about hey um, give Michelle Krieber lines or ideas to say something about what would Apple Bloom say if she was in Thailand and I think I poked the most awesome response where um, how would Apple Bloom respond to changing bits to Thai butt and, oh, that moment. Yeah, and I was surprised with the answer she gave. It was kind of in-depth where, oh my goodness, she's doing what we do on the show, which is analyze things that are not real. It was <laughs> fun. Um, I, I, wow. yeah. I, I think she said one bit or something. Like, it was really... I, I do hope that they caught it on video so we can just listen to it again. It was really interesting. I, I don't remember the whole thing. Yeah, I think someone recorded it. I hope we'll they, yeah, I hope they upload it. And what else? Um I think the other one was um this was before the con happened was arriving at the hotel where we're staying and um meeting or bumping into Michelle and Monique for the very first time. I was stupidly shocked. <laughs> and um Star, you were the one that noticed them first, right? Ah uh, yes, I was like, eh? I didn't expect I was like, hey, Michelle and Monique, I was like, they were walking to Ravani that time. I was like, with Dan, they all, I was like, wow. I was like, I, I was the one who poked you guys. I was like, the VIPs, the VIPs. <laughs> I was I was like tired getting out of the car. Okay, let's do this. Let's get the room. Let's get everything ready. Okay, here's the documentation. And then suddenly, wait, what? VIPs, you say? <laughs> and oh, 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 v- VIPs. Okay, um. Hello, Dan. Push you away. Hello, Monique. Hello, Michelle. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was a shock for me. Yeah, And uh, I have to say the MBS show panel was fun too. Oh, boys. Uh, uh, that video is up uh, last um, Tuesday. So, if you guys enjoy that, uh, you should totally check that one out. And dang it, I don't think iTunes has anything now that I remember about it. Does it? <laughs> Uh, we are no, yeah, yeah. iTunes has, iTunes has, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but iTunes has the, yeah, iTunes has it. So yeah, so that's something. 
Uh, what else can I say about my time? I, I, I just enjoy myself. Like if I were to say a few more, um, meeting out with people, meeting out with the VIPs, um, memorable moments was um, on day two when I had to do another panel. Um, that panel was called Mastering the Microphone with Michelle Krieber. Um, I was somehow involved in that panel with um, Dan and also Mills. So that was cool too. Um, but I was late. Um, I kind of left at 10.30 from the hotel and thinking that I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. Oh crap, I'm late. Eric, uh, uh, my roommate, also my camera guy, poked me to the side and said, hey, uh, isn't that Monique and Michelle? And I say, oh, it is them. They're late too. Hmm. <laughs> So yeah, uh, well, f when I saw them being late, I was kind of calmed down because yeah, yeah, they're, they're late, so uh, there's nothing to be worried about because I'm going to be they're late, so I'm late too. <laughs> Yay! It was raining that day. Oh though, yeah, right? totally, totally. It was raining. Like if it wasn't raining, we'll be walking there. But since it was raining, we had to take the cab. Like uh, the the cab fare was not cheap, but still. Um, we had to take the cab just because if not, I, I wouldn't be on stage. What else can I say? Oh, it sounds like I most of my time was just talking about Michelle, but I have to say it's true. Um, here's what I've noticed. Conventions like this, with the small gathering, it felt like a small crew of people. It felt personal. And the more I think about it, at any bigger con, you won't be able to say hello or get the chance to talk to Michelle that much like how I did. So I kind of enjoy that. Getting that personal uh, time just to talk with them was pretty fun. Yeah, I enjoyed that as well. But anywho, um, besides that, um, I recorded videos. They'll be up soon enough. So, yeah, uh, be sure to stick around to catch that video. Um, what else can I say? What else can I promote? The Mastering the Microphone with Michelle Krieber will be up sometime next week or next month. And the interview with the MBS show and Michelle will be out um, next month too. Um, over there, I talk about a few things. Things um, like, uh, what should I call this? Like, what are her favorite movies and what does she do when she's not um, recording a show or anything else? And fun fact, Michelle has an Xbox One and an Xbox 360 and her favorite game's Halo. Yo. Oh. I know, right? <laughs> so, yeah. That came as a surprise to me because I've been talking to them and I well I didn't well I didn't ask about the game because but yeah because nobody is, would so right like here's just the thing I know here's the thing about every convention when they go there um, people always ask about their work in the show um, blah 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 how do you do this how do you do that and stuff like I thought for my uh, interview with Michelle, I'm going to go something different. Go and talk about, hey, um, you know, you've been to 31 of these conventions and I'm guessing you already heard all of the same 31 questions. So I'm going to put a twist on it. What's your favorite game? What do you do? And stuff, blah, blah, blah. So it's like throw a curveball there, like ask questions that she don't get normally asked. So be sure to check that one there. It's really fun. Um, I had a fun time and she had a fun time too I, I hope that she really enjoyed herself but anywho um with that if you guys have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at the gmail.com you can also catch us on the twitters the show's twitter account is at the show and for me i'm at norman sanzo twy where can the good people find you as always they can find me on youtube and on facebook under double pine productions uh, on DeviantArt and Film Fiction under Twilight Genesis. And you can find me on Twitter under at Midnight underscore Pint. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Star. People can find me on my DeviantArt AngelicorXX where I post 
pictures of my stuff. Uh, I do hope that you post pictures of your convention stuff. That will be cool too. Yep. Well, I still need to pin up my posters. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> All right, then. And what about you, MG? Oh wow. Oh, how to say this? I'm already like thanks for for having me here. Like. <laughs> yeah, but people want to so, see yeah. your art, right? You do arts, right? Yeah, I do arts. Right. Re- um, regularly <laughs> yeah well, where can the good people find you then you can find me in uh deviant art as a periodic brownie mm. yeah all righty then and also please subscribe and rate us on itunes youtube and stitcher radio and also like our facebook page you can catch us on ponyvilife.com links will be in the show notes and also i do implore you people to subscribe to our other show the ambition review and discussion podcast where silver quill have your heart song Myself and a guest of the week come and talk about the pony episodes, comics, and also movies. And also, sometimes we like to dip around and talk about other things than ponies. For example, we talk about Destiny, Overwatch, movies like Batman the Killing Joke, or another movie that I think we all kind of beaten to death is Kung Pao Into the Fist. I think I promoted that one at the panel on Sunday. People should really go watch it. It's really fun. It's it's great. It's me and Silverquill talking while Norman tries not to die from overlaughing. I know. <laughs> if you guys here would just quote it, I'll start giggling. Nobody's quoting it. Oh, it's awkward. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll save it for when you least expect it. Oh, God, no. Ah, uh, but anywho, there's that there. And also, um, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. Over there, you'll get um, access to deleted content and also anything exclusive and also get early access to the review and discussion podcast a day early before it gets posted up on YouTube, iTunes, and also Stitcher Radio. So, Um, do go there if you want to get things early and also you get a thank you from me talking about thank yous I'd like to thank Burger Cat Twilight Genesis and Dragatoria Starstream Master of Black and also Jeffrey thank you so much guys for the awesome support you're welcome Norman no problem man thank you thank you and well I have been Norman Sanzo I've been Twilight Genesis this is Starstream this is Periodic MC And we'll guys catch you next week with another MBS show with less or more derps. Uh, I got no idea. Judging by this show, we're getting more derps then. (laughs) Uh, See ya. Cheers. See ya. Goodbye.